Yo, what is going on everybody? Fred at Eastgate Unit here. Today we are checking out the Lorentz Major. Let's get right into it. So as you can see, this is a very big box, but it is very well padded. In my experience, higher end boards like this always have poor padding. Let's start first with a couple accessories. This little bag right here are extra bushings. Now these are the harder bushings. These are 85A durometer. Their board currently has 85 in the rear and the front 62A. Here's some yellow tape, but it has their actual logo on it. So if you want to wrap up the box again, you could do it. Here are the 200 millimeter by 62 super wide track road wheels and the hubs are precision machine aluminum alloy. Now let's see what else is inside the box. I can't stress this enough. Every boutique board I've ever purchased never came with tools to actually maintenance the actual board itself. Not only do they give you every single tool for every bolt on this board, but they also provide this convenient bag to place all the tools in. Now let's see the rest of the accessories underneath the board. So yeah, this board is not light. It's right under 62 pounds and the max load is 265 pounds. So underneath the board, we have a few more packages. Let's start with this bag. Inside this clear bag, bag is where you'll find the bindings. So bindings will help you out to take your turn so you can lean a little harder without coming off the board. In this box right here, you will find the massive 15 amp charger, which is actually the same weight as most five amp chargers. It also has its own fan and its own handle. Here we go again, more tools so you can maintenance your own board. And this is a gear wrench. This isn't a generic wrench. Can you imagine spending about three to $4,000 and having to go back out and buy more tools just to work on your current board? In this box, you'll find extra tubes for the knobby tires. Here's their case for the remote. It has their logo on and it. And a list of what contains inside the case. Now inside the case is extremely padded up. The remote is very well protected. It's got a nice foam padding around it and it's got the remote USB-C charger. Now, if you notice any scratches on the remote and the board, that's because this is a demo model board with about 200 miles on it. But going back to this case, I love this case. I always carry these around any group ride. Inside this box, you will find the smart taillights slash brake lights, the mounts for the lights, and also the charging cable for the lights. So now let's have a closer look at the board and let's go over the specs. This is a 1500 watt hour 14 S6P Samsung 50 S cells pushing 150 amps with a smart BMS. The deck is made of Canadian maple mixed with three fiberglass layers. The headlights are 2000 lumens each and they're controlled by the remote slash ESC. The standard tires that come with the board are eight inch knobby tires developed by Hoda and they're about 50 millimeters width. This gear drive system is powered by 5,500 watt motors, 7280 custom brushless motors. That's 11,000 peak power watts. The ESC is a custom smart FOC ESC. I also like how the motors are covered by the bash guards. Again, I don't know any other boutique company that actually uses bash guards to protect the motors and to use as a carrying handle because these boards are so heavy. These are 19 inch CNC precision machined aluminum channel trucks. Now let's charge this bad boy up. Let's see how she rides. So as usual, let's start with the deck. Now these type of decks that have the slope in the middle of the deck is not my personal favorite, but just because it's not my personal favorite doesn't mean it might not work perfect for you. But I do understand the ergonomics of the actual deck because it allows you to spread your legs for more stability. So if you're a bigger guy and you like speed, this is definitely a good setup. There's also no flex to it for maximum stability. On the middle of the deck, you will find their RGB Stratus light. So once you turn on the remote, the board will indicate that its power is on. So if you yank the throttle, it'll give you a live reading of how much throttle you're actually giving the board.
Now, same thing with the brakes. It'll indicate how much you're pulling on the brakes. As for the stock knobby eight inch tires, I put these through all kinds of different tests. Let's see how they perform. Now, as for these wider, awesome looking street wheels, unfortunately, I wasn't able to ride them for too long. As I mentioned before, this is a demo model and this came with one bad tube inside of it. I was fully aware of it and I knew it had a slow lead. These tires are so premium that they do not take just standard eight inch tubes. So unfortunately, the company did not have an extra tube for me to use. But since I love low profile tires, I had to try it. So I did the simple swap, pumped up the tire to its recommended PSI and I went for a 10, 15 minute ride. And this was one of the best AT tires I've ever tried. Check it out. Let's do an acceleration test. Hopefully, I don't kill myself. All right, one, two, three, go. Wow. One, two, three, go. That's a little too scary for me. Acceleration test, take two. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. One, two, three. Very good break. Okay, here we go, different hill. Okay, so I wanted to put the trucks and the top speed in the same segment and I'll explain why. Now, I've said this a few times on the channel because I've had other boards that had channel trucks before and I just don't find them to be too stable. What I don't like about channel trucks is that you can't utilize several different bushings in one certain truck. So the front bushing as you can see has white which is the hardest bushing. You can't mix and match from a soft bushing to a hard bushing in one truck. Now to me, that takes away your ability to customize the way you want to ride with your particular style on this board. Now, like I mentioned, I'm utilizing both front and rear hard bushings and it still carves great but some people might not like that and they might need softer bushings to be able to carve which the board. the board comes with but for me when i use these type of big boards with softer bushings when i want to carve the board aggressively the snapback is too severe due to the board's weight so keeping hard front and rear bushings for me is the way to go now when it comes to going top speed i don't know what it is about channel trucks i just don't feel stable on maybe that. it's because i'm a smaller size rider on such a big more powerful board now i wasn't able 
able to get past 29 miles per hour, but I'm sure someone out there that's a much bigger rider used to channel trucks will easily hit 40 miles per hour on this board. So don't get it twisted. Just because my riding style doesn't prefer channel trucks, that doesn't mean it's not right for you. Sometimes I laugh at myself because my size is so small compared to these boards. I think of a child on an actual high powered motorcycle. Just imagine a small child trying to take control of a motorcycle. So the Lorentz Major Remote is quite similar to the new Backfire Remote, but still a little bit different. The Lorentz Remote is a five axis CNC precision shell and also has larger silicone buttons. So while you're riding, it's easier to change gears and to scroll through the menu. Now let's talk about the features of the remote. Hold down the power button and you're greeted with the nice LCD screen. It first tells you you're in gear forward and then the power meter boots up in the middle of the deck. So if you click the power button once, it'll enter into the menu screen. Click the power button again, it'll enter into the remote power menu, which displays all the remote data. Click the top button, that'll go back, scroll down using the roller ball, and let's enter into the board power. I love how it shows the numeric percentage left of the battery, and it also shows all battery data you need. Now let's go back and scroll down to motor and ESC. This displays the ESC temperature and the motor temperature. Then we can go back to customize each mode. Since there's three different gears, you can customize each one. Then we can go back and check out the stats of the board, the mileage, the average speed, the consumption, also firmware updates so your board always has the latest software. Now the bottom button is a one click reverse button. It also has an indicator showing that you're in reverse. Push it back up and the light indicates you're forward as well. You could also double click the top button to lock it out to prevent an unwanted acceleration. Then double click the top button again to release the lock. Now for the lights. If you hold down the top button, the remote itself will indicate to you that the lights are on. Now the front headlights have a total of 4,000 lumens of power. Now I didn't get a chance to install the tail lights that it comes with, but I do have some experience with these same lights. They have a built-in rechargeable battery and they're very intuitive. So when you yank the brakes, they illuminate brighter and can even blink. Now both sides of the boards also have this laser ambient lighting, which looks super cool at night. That mixed with the 4,000 total lumens in the front, basically is gonna look like a small futuristic car coming down the road. Check it out. As you can see pretty much no battery left it's basically a little bit of red if you can see that there five percent battery left still very good power 26 27 miles per hour right with five percent left as for range, I'm a 155 pound rider. The days it took to do the range tests were about 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I reached a total of 38.6 miles of range on the sport. Now, please keep in mind, I did a lot of off-road. I carve a lot and the temperature was not warm whatsoever. Usually when you're riding 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, when you're riding anywhere from 15 to 30 miles per hour or even faster, it's gonna feel much more colder than it actually is. So if you don't do too much off-roading and you're actually living in a much warmer climate, that you'll get much more range. Final thoughts. So if you are a bigger rider that needs maximum amount of range, 
maximum amount of performance. You want good customer service. And most of all, you want a boutique board with a lot of features instead of a remote without a screen. Or a company that doesn't give you tools to actually even fix a flat tire. Then this board is just right for you. I definitely think this is a great substitute for the Cali NYC customers because Cali NYC is no longer around. I also did enjoy riding this much more than my Cali XL40. It definitely has more performance, more range, and a hell of a lot more features. I just feel like when you spend north of $3,000, you shouldn't just be impressed by the board itself. You should look inside the box and see what else the board comes with, all the extras you could add on the board, the tools it comes with to help maintain the board and to actually change up things like the tires and rims that you want and all the easy and fun customization you can do inside the remote slash ESC. Feel free to use my discount code for $100 off. Thank you for watching, guys. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Have a good one, guys.